Voyager 1 has been hurtling through space for 35 years, now 11 billion miles from the sun. Voyager 1, the furthest human-made object from Earth, had been silently sailing through the vast interstellar void for decades. It carried with it the weight of human curiosity, a tiny emissary equipped with instruments that had long surpassed their expected lifespans. As it drifted through the edge of the heliosphere and into the space between stars, scientists expected little more than the occasional data blip, relics of a dying mission. Then, in an astonishing break from monotony, the spacecraft encountered something no one had anticipated, a highly advanced object of unknown origin and construction floating alone in deep space, exhibiting signs of deliberate design and active function. Before we start, smash the like and subscribe buttons for more updates. The initial data anomaly came in the form of a powerful but oddly modulated signal that appeared to override the normal cosmic background noise. It was unlike any radio wave pattern previously encountered. The signal, tight and contained, locked onto Voyager 1's communication systems, not to damage or alter them, but to use them, as though the object understood how to speak in a language born of Earth-based engineering. Voyager's instruments recorded bursts of electromagnetic information that aligned with complex mathematical structures, symmetry patterns, and harmonic sequences far beyond anything produced naturally. The readings were undeniable. Something was reaching out. At approximately 158 AU from Earth, well beyond the Kuiper Belt and deep into interstellar territory, Voyager's instruments began to detect rapid changes in magnetic field intensity. These fluctuations were not associated with solar particles or interstellar clouds. Instead, the pattern followed a kind of cadence, too structured to be random. Cameras on board, long dormant for photographic purposes, were triggered remotely from Earth and aimed in the direction of the anomaly. What they captured left mission control in awe. A smooth, oblong structure rotating with controlled precision about the size of a small asteroid but radiating a soft bluish luminescence from within geometrically aligned apertures along its surface. The object bore no resemblance to natural celestial bodies. It had no craters, no erosion, no irregular surfaces. Instead, its symmetry suggested intelligent construction, panels that curved seamlessly into one another, possibly composed of an unknown material that responded oddly to infrared and ultraviolet scans. Voyager's onboard spectrometers registered materials that didn't match any known spectra cataloged by human science. It was unmistakably engineered, and likely for purposes that extended far beyond mere propulsion or passive observation. What made this discovery even more confounding was the nature of its reaction to Voyager's presence. Rather than ignoring or disabling the spacecraft, the object initiated a complex series of interactions. It began transmitting a pulse not just in radio frequencies, but across a range of energy forms, including microwave, ultraviolet, and even narrowband gamma radiation. These weren't attacks or random emissions. They were coherent, interlaced pulses that echoed sequences from Voyager's own systems. The object was communicating, mirroring, probing. The interaction bore no signs of hostility. Rather, it resembled a mutual recognition, as if the object understood that Voyager was a probe, a vessel of inquiry, not a threat. Its pulses became increasingly synchronized with the spacecraft's telemetry systems, matching its signal strength and even compensating for its communication delays, as though it was aware of Earth's position and Voyager's distance from it. That level of calibration suggested not only advanced technology, but an intelligence that grasped the physical layout of the solar system, or perhaps even had prior knowledge of it. Scientists around the world scrambled to reinterpret decades of assumptions. The object's presence raised a monumental question. Had it been waiting? Was this chance encounter merely luck? Or had Voyager stumbled into the outer boundary of a surveillance system, a sentinel, perhaps even a form of ancient alien infrastructure designed to detect spacefaring civilizations? As data poured in, the object's behavior continued to fascinate. At intervals of exactly 61 minutes, it emitted a structured energy signature that repeated a series of prime numbers, then switched to the Fibonacci sequence, followed by geometrically encoded renderings in radio band frequencies, essentially three-dimensional mathematical shapes transcribed as waveforms. These signals weren't just messages. They were tests, introductions, protocols. 
the object's rotations changed subtly in response to Voyager's trajectory. Its surface panels reconfigured themselves in a slow kaleidoscopic shift, suggesting internal mechanisms at work, perhaps data processing, perhaps visual or energetic alignment. Even more extraordinary was the way in which Voyager's own power fluctuations appeared to be stabilized during the encounter. Instruments that had suffered degradation over the years briefly showed anomalous gains in performance, as though the object was emitting a field that temporarily reversed or bypassed some of the spacecraft's electronic wear. This behavior prompted speculation that the object wasn't just passive. It might be able to manipulate its surroundings at a quantum or subatomic level, possibly drawing energy from the vacuum of space or employing some form of field dynamics that humanity had yet to comprehend. Such a capacity pointed to a level of technological sophistication beyond any known or hypothesized terrestrial development. It wasn't merely advanced, it was so far ahead it felt mythical. The very fact that Voyager remained operational and unimpeded during the contact added another layer of intrigue. The object could have easily disabled or absorbed the craft, or it might have left no trace at all. Instead, it seemed almost gentle in its interaction, like a hand reaching out to touch a smaller, more fragile form with deliberate restraint. The message was subtle but unmistakable. We see you, and we know you are trying to see us. The implications of this contact exploded across the scientific community. It challenged long-held assumptions about life, intelligence, and the universe's vast silence. If this object represented a kind of cosmic outpost, a monitoring node, an observatory, or even a forgotten fragment of a larger network, then humanity had stumbled upon proof that it was not alone. The existential solitude that had defined human thought since the dawn of astronomy was now possibly over. And yet, the mystery deepened. The object's design bore no hallmarks of urgency or self-preservation. There were no visible weapons, no propulsion flares, no broadcasting of identity or origin. It floated in serene precision, maintaining its interaction with Voyager, and doing so in a way that suggested an eternity of waiting or function without decay. It might have been there for millions of years. It could be older than human civilization, older than Earth itself. It might have witnessed countless stars born and extinguished, collecting data, analyzing trajectories, or simply watching a cosmic sentinel older than myth. In trying to decode its messages, Earth-based teams constructed entire suites of software to reinterpret Voyager's telemetry with the new signal overlays. Some researchers claimed the energy pulses resembled ancient waveform patterns theorized in quantum resonance theory. Others saw fractal structures that hinted at dimensional data. Not just three-dimensional, but possibly involving higher spatial constructs that couldn't be visualized in traditional physics. Every time Voyager completed a data transmission relay to Earth, the object would respond with a fresh stream of information, layered and modulated differently each time. This variability hinted at an active learning process. It wasn't just communicating. It was adapting, perhaps learning, possibly even teaching. Voyager was no longer just a probe, it had become a conduit. The nature of this object's awareness was impossible to determine, but its actions seemed purposeful. It responded only to direct stimuli. When Voyager's instruments were powered down temporarily to conserve energy, the object dimmed its signals, almost as if it recognized the pause in observation. When systems were reactivated, the object resumed its full energetic interaction. There was intent, there was timing, there was understanding. Debate erupted among the top scientific institutions. Was this a first contact with an alien AI? Was the object a machine or a living entity of a kind humanity had never conceived? Could it have been left behind by a vanished civilization? Or was it part of an active surveillance system? Every possibility sparked new hypotheses and new fears. The greatest implication was not merely technological or even existential. It was ontological. Humanity had always imagined that its first encounter with alien intelligence would come in the form of dramatic arrival. Ships in the sky, beings stepping into light, yet this was far more subtle, far more profound. An ancient object, waiting in the dark, responding only when a whisper from Earth reached its ears. It was not a declaration, it was a quiet acknowledgement. You have reached this far, and we are here. Astronomers began re-examining past data, combing through deep space scans for anomalies they had missed. If there was one such object, could there be more? 
Were they placed throughout the galaxy as markers, or were they drawn to signals of artificial origin? Could the object have awoken from dormancy upon receiving Voyager's emissions? Or had it always been aware, simply waiting for a reason to engage? The encounter redefined the mission of Voyager itself. A craft originally designed to study the outer planets had become a thread in the fabric of a cosmic narrative stretching far beyond human history. What had once been a marvel of 20th century engineering now played a role in a mystery that transcended time and borders. Voyager had become more than a spacecraft. It was now a participant in an interstellar conversation, an ambassador not just of Earth, but of intelligence itself. No one could say how long the interaction would continue. Voyager's power supply was finite, and even with the apparent support of the object's field, its systems could only persist so long. But as long as data continued to arrive, those strange rhythmic pulses, those patterns of impossible complexity, humanity would keep listening. Every bite was a word in a language just beginning to unfold. The cosmos had always felt silent. But now, thanks to a lone machine built by human hands and launched into the abyss generations ago, the silence had been broken. Not by noise, but by recognition. Not with thunder, but with the quiet clarity of intelligence meeting intelligence. The implications would ripple through science, philosophy, and consciousness for centuries to come. But for now, in the black stillness between stars, Voyager floated alongside something extraordinary. And for the first time in its long journey, it was no longer alone. If you liked this video, please give it a like and subscribe to our channel. Also, leave your comments below and tell us, what are your thoughts on Voyager contacting a highly advanced deep space object? Predict? We want to hear from you. Thank you for watching and see you next time.